Okay, so um, for simple descriptive maps, we don't really need GIS, although GIS offers the, uh, is, is also a simple tool to do some such maps. So you won't, you won't need to do your maps using PowerPoints. Um, however, for the, more, for the more complex analysis, for the analytical analysis, you do need a GIS. Uh, the strength being that you will be able to analyze, well, to, to, yeah, to analyze the relationship between different layers. And as I said, these layers need to be georeferenced. And I'm going to talk about what we mean by georeferenced. And in a sense, I'm going to talk about the sp the sp spatial data. Okay. So georeferencing is basically <coughs> two things. Uh, this this is the real world. This is an object in the real world. Um, let's say a, a cooling tower uh, here in Stuttgart. And when we reference an object, we will do two things. First, we will we will locate that. Uh, that, that object on a, on a spheroid or on a model of the Earth using uh, geographical coordinates. That's the first thing. So in somehow we were represented in a 3D representation of the world. And then we, we, we need to do a second thing, which is we need to project that representation on a map, on a two-dimensional uh, uh, um, uh, support which is usually paper or a computer screen, computer screen in our case. And in the next few slides, I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain um, three things. The, the, the uh, coordinate system that we use to locate that real-world object on a model of the Earth. That's the uh, coordinate system that we'll be using. There's one that is uh, very commonly used, which is the geographical uh, coordinate system. There's, there's a few words to say about the model of the Earth, the spheroid or the ellipsoid, which, uh, which need to be defined. And that's, that's, why we, what, that's the information that is included in the datum of your data, spatial data. And then there's the projection that you will be using, and there are different projections. And we need to be careful because uh, Different data will use different uh, projections, different model of the Earth, and different reference uh, geographical well, coordinates system. So that's why that's why it's important to have a few concepts uh, here before using the GIS. So first is the the way to represent on the the, the model of the Earth uh, any point on that on that uh, on that object on that uh, model. The most commonly used um, system is called the geographical coordinate system, okay? And it, it uses the, the angle from um, a prime meridian and from the equator. And I think you all, most of you, all of you are familiar with that system. Uh, so basically the, uh, the, north, the northern hemisphere uh, is divided into, or is, is uh, divided into uh, 90 degrees of latitudes. So it goes from zero at the equator to plus 90 degrees at the pole. And similarly, the northern hemisphere is divided into uh, 90 <coughs> N, so 90 degrees uh, going from zero at the equator to minus 90 degrees at the pole. Okay? So these are the latitudes. and. You can express them in de degrees from, from the, the, the center of the Earth relative to the, 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 the equator. And then you have the, the longitude, which are calculated from the, the, the primary region, which is in, in passes through Greenwich. So if this is the primary region, we will be able to uh, divide the Earth uh, between, uh, in, in um, 180 degrees from this primary region to the to the east, and 180 degrees to the west of that primary region. Okay, so this is the lat-long uh, coordinate system. The latitudes are parallel to each other, and the distance from two uh, any two lines of, of latitude is, is equal, whereas, whereas the longitudes, uh, the distance between two lines are not, is not constant. 
as the, 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 the world is, is, is formed. So that's the commonly, most commonly used geographical uh, coordinate system, and it's called the geographical coordinate system in Kla or Lachlan. There are other systems uh, which, which is used, which are used. One of them is the Cartesian coordinate system. So rather than working with, from angles, uh, angles from the prime origin and the, the equator, you will use what we call eastings and northings. And you will express this as a distance from the uh, from the from the uh, uh, origin of your Cartesian system, and this is very related to projections, which I'll come back to later. But I just want you first maybe to remember that that's the most widely used coordinate system. Then you have what we call the datum. And here I just want you to, to remember that uh, because the Earth is not perfectly is not perfectly sphere, it's not a sphere, it's not a perfect sphere, but it's rather an ellipse, and it's actually not a perfect ellipse. So you have different ways, you have different ways of representing it. Uh, and therefore when you when you when you're dealing with spatial data, you have to know. The, the datum that was used, and therefore the, the shape of the ellipse that was used, and the center of that of that model, and also you need to know uh, some, you need to specify some real, real, uh, real life objects on the Earth. How do they relate? How are they placed on that that model of the Earth? Okay, and I know it's it's not uh, it's not that easy to explain, and this is called the datum. But I want you to remember that different data are used, um, and therefore one point, one particular point, let's say this this building using one data might not have the same coordinates using a different data. Okay, so that's why it's important to know which data was used to, uh, to collect the location of your data of your of your, of your feature. Just one question. Yeah. To localize one point like here, you don't, it's not enough to have the geographical system? Or you need both? You need the datum and the... Co and yeah, the you need to know which, which datum was used to, to assign this coordinate system to your object. But you express it as longitude and latitude knowing the datum you used? Yes, exactly. So you will need, ideally you will need to know the datum. Now the good news is that Many people use the same datum, more and more. <laughs> but it's not always the case. It's not always the case, and uh, uh, it, it's, it should be checked beforehand. The development of the datum has been done because sometimes we want to measure very precise the distance between points. So, if we use the same datum for the air in general. For some regions where there is variations, the, the measurements of distance will be not precise. So because of that, almost every country has developed its own datum, you know, to have really the shape of the country and to be able to measure the distance in a very exact uh, way. But as, as Tomar was saying, we can use general or world uh, datum that can be facilitated the change of information. So, yeah, so for instance, in this, this example, the red, the red datum, or the red ellipsoid with the, the center and the, the orientation might be, might be better uh, for the US than the blue one, which might be better fitted for, for Europe, as the, as, the, as the Earth is not perfectly, uh, is not per perfect sphere. So different countries uh, have interest in different datums. So common that data, I should say, the, let's say datums uh, used are the uh, what we call the WGS84, uh, and it's this one is used uh, for uh, for the entire world. So it's kind of an international datum that is used, and it's used by most by most GPS. So that's why at the end of the day. Most of the spatial data that you will be dealing with will be using that datum. Okay. Uh, in Europe, we use a slightly different uh, datum, which is better for us. But it's it's 
is actually very closely related to the WGS84.2. So it actually, if you, it doesn't really matter, even though uh, some data here could be expressed using, will be uh, given using this ETRS89, uh, it will be very, very similar to the uh, WGS84. I don't want to confuse you, I just want you to know that there are different data news and it has to be taken into account. Are there comparisons? Or what, the, what are the differences about in, in kilometers? Which I think it, it, in this, between those two, it's not even in meters. It's in meters, let's say. Okay. They, what, what it added, I think this one, this datum added a few reference points, control points that were in Europe, which was not the case for the, uh, this one. But does it strongly depend on the latitude, for example? Because, I mean, the, the Earth is much wider on the equator than it is uh, in a bit dumped on the poles. So if I take uh, the same um, datum here in Europe, could I take the same datum in the United States if, I, if I'm on the same latitude? I think that's, that's part of it, but that's not all the story. That's more important in the, the projections. Uh, with distortions, there will be more distortion if you uh, depending on uh, what projection you use, depending on the area where you are. Uh, but again, here uh, notes for the for the datum, the fact that uh, this one is used as a good approximation for the whole world. You could use this one both in Europe and the US and Asia. Everywhere. Another good news is that in in the GIS softwares, you'll be able to automatically. Uh, let's say uh, harmonize all these all these uh, spatial data with uh, with one one of the options. So once once you've chosen the coordinate system, the the, the datum, there's the 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 task is to project to project the data which which is in three three dimensional on a three dimensional model of the Earth to a flat surface, and this is what we call uh, projection. And that, uh, to confuse you more, there are different ways of doing, of projecting this, okay? These are three uh, widely used projection methods. The cylindrical projection, the conical, and the planet projections. And different projections are, are, have different uh, properties, which can, in some case, uh, keep the, the, uh, the angles, or the distance, or the surface of your features. Okay, so there is no real, there is no, there is no better projection than another. It depends also where you are in the world and what you are studying. If you're studying areas, you might be better off taking a conical projection. If you, if you're working with distances, maybe the cylindrical projection would be better, uh, better suited for your purposes. But you need to know which projection was used uh, in your spatial data, if any. One. One commonly used projection, which is good if you want to study distances. So that's one probably that I would use when I'm using, uh, when I'm doing a study uh, regarding distances from a source, is what we call the UTM projection, the Universal Transverse Mercator projection, uh, which will be done for uh, actually it's done for any any of the 60 zones. The world is divided into 60 zones. Uh, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, and it will be done individually for each of these zones. So, if uh, if I'm doing a study on in Stuttgart uh, and I want to uh, to measure distances, I will use I will uh, reproject my 3D data using the unit, the transverse Mercator projection, making sure that I'm working with the zone uh, 32, which is this zone here in the northern hemisphere, okay? And it will, it will, uh, it will be probably the most useful projection uh, in, for, this, for this practical in terms of converting the lat long data into meters, into distances. And um, what's the M stand for? Mercator. Mercator, yeah. He was an uh, explorer. Mm -hmm. And as you, you will see in today's practical, different projections um, make your data look different. Uh, the first projection that we will be using, which is a default projection in, 
in QGIS is what we call the plat carré projection. It's not a UTM. It simply plots on the on the flat map the, the longitude and the latitude of your data. So it's not good for working with distances, but it's one type of projection. And you will see that Europe look, looks very squashed, or squeezed, uh, whereas when you use UTM projections, which is used to, to, to deal and to work with meters, it will be more, uh, it will be more uh, less squashed from the, from the pools. So the projections lead to different uh, maps on, on a two-dimensional two paper. Sorry, Thomas. Then the first things to do is to set uh, the datum and the, the UTM. The first thing to, to, to do would be when to check whether when you have data, when you, let's say, using data from another source, uh, which, what, what is the, the, the coordinate system, mm -hmm. what is the datum used, and what is the projection if it's, if it's given to you projected. Okay? <coughs> and then, then one of the challenges would be to harmonize uh, the projections so that you can work with layers that have the same projections using the same coordinate system. And actually, in QGIS, we'll be, we'll be setting uh, the projection of our, of our projects, defining, defining all those, those important things that I've said, so the coordinate system, the datum, and the projection. Uh, this morning, we'll be using uh, two types of, uh, of spatial reference, or two types of projections. The first one, uh, which has this code, you don't need to learn it by heart, but it defines, it's, it's, uh, it's 43 26, it defines the spatial reference which uses lat long, so it's the geographical coordinate system. It uses the datum uh, WGS84, uh, and it's a uh, plat carré or equidistant projections. And the units are degrees. Degree, degrees, minutes, seconds, or you can use decimal degrees. The projection, the projection, the UTM projection I've just spoken uh, of well, is the UTM projection, this one for the for, for Stuttgart, so for the zone 32 north, has this particular code. Okay? And we'll see together an example where you can, at the beginning of your project, before you import your data, you can set um, uh, on the fly projection options, which will mean that any data coming from outside will be reprojected using these spatial references so that all the layers in your, in your, on your map have the same spatial references and you can therefore uh, work uh, with them together. So again, this is just to, to, uh, to summarize what, what we mean by, uh, by a GIS, or at least what can be done in a GIS. So within a GIS, any geographical object or feature, whether it's case, uh, cases and controls, the source, uh, land use, is associated with two types of information. The first one is its location, using all the parameters that we've been uh, talking about. And the second type of information is the attribute, giving, giving uh, a name to the feature, a code to the feature, or a value, which might be incidence or number. So to each, to each feature, geographical feature in our GIS, there will be attached to it a value, or a name, or an attribute in, 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 in the language of the GIS. What is good about GIS, which cannot be done in PowerPoint or in other softwares, is that it allows you to, to superimpose different layers, which contains different information, each useful for, for, your, for, your, for your analysis. And I hope I convinced you that the different layers, they need to be displayed using a common projections, otherwise you won't be able to superimpose them. That's why you need to carefully check beforehand if they're using the same projection or the same data, that tool on the same uh, coordinate system. And uh, we will see how we can, we can uh, click on the on-the-fly projection option in QGIS to make sure that this is, this is done. There are two main types of data 
spatial data uh, in, a, in a GIS. The first one is what we call uh, vectors, or data that are stored as vectors, and they include points, lines, and polygons. And uh, they're quite easy to handle, and they're usually saved as a shape file. They're contained into a shape file. That's the most commonly used type of data in GIS. So a point would be one coordinate, or two coordinates, y, x, for case or control. A line would be several points along, along a line to define a road or a river, or anything that can be described as a line. And the polygon, again, would be a set of coordinates uh, delimiting a polygon. Uh, for instance, the, the most common example is the, the boundary, the boundary, administrative boundary of, a, of an administrative unit. You have a second type of uh, data, which is called the raster. And these are images. It can be a scan, it can be a satellite image, a drawing. And images, as well as vectors, can be georeferenced. And Google Earth or Google Earth images that we use this morning are a typical example of a raster uh, type of data. That's one example, the, the, map, the map of Europe containing all the administrative levels uh, from the country to the, to the district to the département. Uh, this is a type, this is an example of vector data, polygons, which we'll be importing uh, this morning from the Eurostat uh, agency. So each, each polygon on the map represents an administrative level. And there's a, there's a table, the attributable, attribute table behind, behind those polygons, which give to each of them an, an ID and different uh, variables depending on the information that you have on each unit. You have uh, point, these are vectors as well, but these are points data. This will be the cases and controls uh, of, a, of a fictional outbreak in Stuttgart that we'll be uh, mapping this morning. And again, the, the logic is the same. You have a point, which corresponds to one precise geographical coordinate. And there is an uh, attribute table attached to each, to each of the layers. A quick word on uh, vector layers. So these are the, the polygons, the lines, and the points we've just seen. They are stored into what we call shape files. Probably you've heard of it. The shape file was uh, um, invented by the first GIS software made by the Esri company. And it's actually, it's a shape file, but it contains usually at least three types of files. Here I've put four. So it's not only one file, although we call it a shape file, and we usually uh, we will be uh, using this SHP extension to uh, import the data. But these are the, the files that are also attached to it. So the shape file itself contains the geographical feature. You have the SHX extension, which is an index of the, of the geometry that allows you to seek backward and forward quickly in the, in the system. You have the DBF, that's quite important. That's the attributable table, attributable data uh, table, at attribute, attribute table attached to, the, to each of the, to each of the, of the features, which contains the, the, the data the ID and so on and so forth. And you have a PRJ uh, file, which this one includes the information on the, the projection, the data on the geographical, the uh, reference, uh, reference system uh, used. Sorry, Thomas, can I ask, what, what do you mean by seeking forwards and backwards? Mm -hmm. Well, this, um, actually it's a good question, I don't, uh, <coughs> it, it makes a link between the, the geographical information and, uh, and the, the, tabular, the tabular form of the data. And it's, it's, it's allow, uh, this is what allows, for instance, the zoom in, zoom out uh, of, the, of, of your data, of viewing the data on, on, the, on the screen. But I, I don't really know the, the details. But it's, it's a file, I mean, without these files, without this extension, you won't be able to open the shell file and to view, to view your geographical information. Since, okay? since the first shell file is very long, you, need, you might have 
much in any unique every form that the of the borderline. The second is just an index for all all uh, polygons included in the in the first. And it's the connection between the, the shape file and the information we put in. So it's it's just a list of all, all regions with an address or index uh, where to find the shape in the first file. As far as I know. And yeah, m maybe one the shape file information contains the actual graphical information on how your boundary looks like. And depending on your level of uh, detail, it might be very broad, where um, your geographical region might just look like a blot, or it could be really fine. And this is a graphical information that needs to be linked to your uh, how to mark call it the. the the columnar attributes, like how, how many people live there and so on. And to make this link between the graphic, the, the, the vector graphics itself, and the actual information you lay or you need your GIS to, um, uh, why, why you worked with the GIS in the first place, you need this database index, which is the shape index format. Hmm? So, um, yeah. We need to make a decision. <laughs> 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 You say from the projection is from three dimension to two dimension, but at the end we have three dimension uh, on the map also, like uh, the zoom, or you have also the possibility to, I mean, with Google Earth, no, you because also you don't look. Uh, but it's it's on a screen, screen, so it's yeah, two dimensional. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's okay. why it's a projection, even though it's on a screen, even though it appears 3D in Google Earth, it's it's projected on a screen, okay. two dimensions. Plus, we will be u we will not be using uh, altitude. For, for mapping our data. We will be c only concerned about longitude and latitude, x, y coordinates, so not, not, uh, not altitude. Yeah. Then you have always to charge all the four uh, files. A shape file usually yeah, will you will never come alone. It will, be, it will be actually at least three or three. four three. files. But you don't have to worry about the different kinds. You just mm. need to know that they exist behind. And when you'll be modifying Attributes, you will be working with this DBF file that is behind it. When you will be modifying, but you will never, we will rarely modify, when you will be modifying actual location, you will be modifying this, this file and these two mm -hmm. files. But the, the altitude, wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't this be an attribute format? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's uh, it could be an attribute format. Uh, it's... Could be, but it's used. It's what? projected and it's, but it's I've never used it. They used it for uh, the Bluetooth output. It's in usually they use the, they look for malaria. It's interesting, for example. Yeah, yeah. But but you can go with this, they look because that with altitude and the temperature is rising, they were thinking that maybe there yeah. were less. What can be added on the map is, uh, is simply a raster mm -hmm. uh, image mm -hmm. where yeah. each pixel gives you yeah. an altitude. So mm -hmm. you do have. You do have the the, the altitude attribute yeah, in in your GIS, yeah. but it's it's not given in the, in the shape file. You could use like an ordnance survey. You could show. Yeah, but no. What it's what is what you said. It could be part of the attribute table. Yeah. Uh, it's easy for the They use like like yeah. no. If no, you have no, like what you see yes. on the map, like the altitude lines. Or yeah. 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 Then we project projection yeah. of that. And but it's, this is, will be a vector, it will be included in a vector format or a raster format. It's true, it's true that we, we might, uh, might be working with altitude for, for your studies and your project, especially when it's linked to vectors or I mean, to mosquitoes and, and flies. But shape files are always two dimensional. The data and shape files. The, the, the coordinates. Yes, there are x, y coordinates. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about developments, new developments, of that a, a three-dimensional GIS? No, the thing is that if you work with shape files that yeah. are points, you can add the elevation in, a, in, the, in your attribute table yeah. as another variable. Okay. For each point, as y coordinate, you have uh, an elevation. Okay. For shapes, for polygons, mm -hmm. when you have shapes that are polygons, it's more difficult. Yeah, sure. Because but you cannot specify a single, okay. or you could specify a single elevation for each polygon, but sometimes you work with rasters. Mm -hmm. But would be very nice to I to say. Do, do you have ever involved? tried to see a three-dimensional point cloud on the screen, and did you have rotated it? Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. see anything. Yeah. I, 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 
I'm, I'm fond of it, and I saw these developments, it's 20 years ago starting, and we ended up with projections, because we always see a flat screen, or we have paper, mm -hmm. and you imagine you see much more, if you, you always see something if you rotate it. So you, you have to move it when you want to see something in, in three dimensions on screen. It's, it's a philosophical or it's, it's, it's something which, which touches our, our visual um, uh, impairment in, in some, some sense. Because we don't see three dimensions, we imagine to see them on the screen. Um, do, you, do, you, do you know Escher's paintings, mm -hmm. where he plays around with, with these um, conventions we, we have? And it's not so easy. To, to just put this this third or fourth dimension. But, but this is quite a lot of information in there, especially if you have a uh, different altitude, then the mm -hmm. distances are different yeah. as well. So. But as you said, you can use it as a as an additional attribute which you have to analyze as um, distance to some yeah. point or so. Yeah, the altitude will typically not be included in, the, in this file. Mm -hmm. It might mm -hmm. be included in the attribute table. And um, can I just ask again, stupid And um, what's the nuts underscore rg thing? Nuts is for uh, it's you. Uh, <coughs> it's a French. It's a French uh, word for um, uh, unité uh, territoriale statistique, and the n would be. It's a, it's a um, territorial unit classification by the EU, and it classifies uh, administrative boundaries in, in three or three or four three categories. So you have nation, the, the country, region, the district, or even s smaller 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 levels. So we should expect everything to have these kind of prefixes normally if we're using. That's no. That's that's an, e, that's an EU uh, Eurostat uh, classification of administrative levels. So, in France, for instance, the regions the regions will correspond to level two, and the département level three. In the UK, it might be different. Depending, the counties might be level two. And, and you can give it like the name you want. I think it was a like normal five. Bit. So we yeah, just covered vectors, and these are rasters. So that these these are images where um, so the whole the whole um, the whole area of interest has information included in pixels. So that depends on the resolution of the image, and each color or each, uh, well each pixel has assigned to it a value which can be which can be uh, presented as a, as a different color. Uh, or it's it's a score basically it's a value. And that's a typical uh, raster data, so satellite images, uh, paintings, and, and, uh, uh, scans that you might import. And they, are they can be georeferenced as well, because each pixel or each point on the image can be uh, assigned a geographical coordinate. They are used, uh, they are often using well, remote sensing, um, Studies using remote sensing use a lot of uh, satellite images to classify the, the land cover into different categories depending on the vegetation, dominant vegetation, and therefore we can try to relate uh, health data to, to the environment uh, via vegetation index and so forth. Are there these? Satellite uh, images normally okay. You can you go to Google Earth, but if you want to have, I don't know, like different satellites and different resolutions, or yeah, yeah. That you can measure. And, uh, you have different. Uh, I'm not a remote sensing expert, but there are different types of satellite images uh, studying different different. Uh, let's say, uh, types of surfaces. They can give information for each, each pixel on the temperature, on the humidity, on the land cover, on the elevation. Uh, and it, there are different satellites, there are different types of satellite pictures. Uh, usually the, the providers are the environmental agencies of your countries. Um, typically, typically Google, Earth, Google Earth is just a picture which, with no information on the, the vegetation index. Although you could classify you at home, you know, green is equal to grass and blue to water, but it's it's not a it's not a 
It's not the, the, the images they would use for uh, vegetation index studies. But how does it work? Practically, how does it work? You, get, you have to pay or have to. Uh, it's a good question. I think uh, I think some of the agencies provide them freely, especially for for health projects. Uh, you also have to pay for them for for them. But I, I don't really know how they used how they used such uh, images. Yeah, I wonder if you can just there's some website where you can go and depending on the resolution resolution actually you can have like you can download some raster, but then I, I don't know which resolution etc. I think when you need like really like high resolution, then you need to pay or you need to be in contact with NASA or institution yeah. like that. But uh, there's still some like available on uh, in the internet. It's like fine if I don't remember it, uh, the link to the uh, remote sensing uh, to do uh, detailed studies of the environment and diseases. They require uh, they require specialists in remote sensing will be able to precisely classify the different pixels in different categories, meaning, meaningful categories. Briefly, before we, we make, have a coffee, uh, the, the source of data, they can be, for, for vector data, they can be your, your own data. If you go on the field with a GPS, um, I guess some of you have already done that. So you can, you can collect the GPS point, vector, or polygons making sure that you use the, the data you want to use. You can, you can actually define that on your GPS. And you can import that to your, to your GIS. You will see how um, the QGIS has, has an option as a plugin to import directly data from, from GPS. Uh, you have uh, websites with available um, vector information. I think the most useful probably for well, for me, at least, as a, as a field epidemiologist in Europe, uh, would be uh, the Eurostat website where they have the GISCO uh, department and give, they, they provide the uh, free of, co of cost, the ad entries at the different levels, the, the NUTS level. Um, and this is, this is the link. If you, if you type in Google, if you type uh, GIS, GISCO, and GIS, we will have, uh, we will have access to the, to the library of maps, which I find quite useful. Um, for, other, for, for those of you who are doing work overseas, abroad, uh, I think the, the FAO has also quite a nice uh, library with uh, free available vectors, vector maps, but I have less experience in that. The FAO is, is one of the sources. Uh, I mean, maybe some of you knows uh, know of the sources. I know Kassel, you've been using... Uh, it's not library, no? It's one yeah, of the Yeah, library is for boundaries in developing countries. Yeah, map libraries. Map libraries. Yes, it's good. And so typically these, these institutions, uh, they will give you the shape files corresponding to the area of interest. No, no. There is also open street maps, which will give you uh, detail. It's it's growing. It will give you detailed vector uh, information for, uh, for 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 urban areas, roads and buildings. Uh, for the raster, uh, Google Earth is one source. Although you ha you do have to uh, uh, you have you have to you know, to mention that you're using these images. And they're not they're free, but there is a license agreement that you need to read depending on what you're doing with the images. Um, so this morning we'll be using we'll be using one of these one of these uh, shape files from directly from Eurostat, and we'll see how to import uh, not not st strictly speaking GPS points, but uh, CSV files containing GPS points, and we'll also be using a Google Earth image, and that's the. That's the website, the Eurostat website, which I, I find quite useful. The nuts, is it defined here? No more, yeah, it's nomenclature. Nomenclature? No mm -hmm. Of territorial units for statistics. So it's, they're trying to harmonize the, the way uh, admin boundaries are managed in the EU.